in two weeks, we're beginning our much, anti much anticipated personal spiritual growth campaign. We're going to be taking six weeks where we're going to be focusing on helping all of us grow spiritually in a very intense way. We're going to use six different weeks. We're going to use six different features. In fact, we're going to use six different learning styles that we're hoping will help us all to make a spiritual jump in our growth in the Lord. During that six weeks, we're going to watch six videos on what on earth am I here for, discovering my calling in life. You'll be watching those videos in small groups. So if you're not involved in a small group, if you've not signed up for one, I want to encourage you to do that. Then there's going to be a discussion of six life lessons in that small group to help you discover where am I headed in my life. Then we're going to memorize six verses from the Bible. And then you're going to get to hear six messages by me that parallel what we're looking at in the small groups. Then you're going to be reading a daily devotion from what on earth am I here for? That's a revised version of the purpose given life. We'll be passing out those books next week. One's for everybody. We've actually probably got some extra copies if you know someone that you might get invite. Then we're going to endeavor to practice what we do together as a church as we learn how to be more wise in living our lives. Now then, commercial's over. <laughs> Would you take out your outlines, please? I want to begin with a very simple question. If God came to you and said, I'll give you anything you want in life, you just name one thing and I will give it to you. What would your answer be? I'd like fewer problems. <coughs> I'd like to have better health. I'd like to get out of debt. <coughs> I'd like to have a lot less conflict in my relationships. I doubt that you would ask for what Solomon asked for. Folks, this question was actually asked by God to a guy in the Bible. God came to Solomon one day. If you remember, Solomon was the son of David, king of Israel. David died, and Solomon became king of Israel. God came to him one day and said, what would you like in life, Solomon? I'll give you anything you ask for. Name one thing, and I'll give it to you. Solomon did not ask for wealth. Solomon did not ask for fame. He did not ask for comfort. He did not ask for long life or for pleasure. He said, God, I want you to give me wisdom. God, I want you to give me wisdom. Wisdom? To be honest, if God asked me that one thing, I doubt very seriously I would have asked for wisdom. I doubt any of you would either. In fact, that might have been on my list, but it sure wouldn't have been at the top. But God was so impressed with Solomon's request. He said, Solomon, I'm going to grant it. And I'm not only going to give you wisdom, 
You're not only going to be the wisest man in the world, I'm also going to make you the wealthiest man in the world, the most famous man in the world, the most powerful man in the world in your own day. I'm going to give you everything that everybody else wants to because you ask wisely. Folks, I really don't think we understand how important wisdom is. Do you realize it is the key to literally everything else that you want in life? The Bible says in Proverbs 8, 11, Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing else you could ever want is as valuable. Wait a minute. Nothing else that I could ever want is as valuable as wisdom. In fact, it says that it's more precious than rubies. Now, I'm honest with you, I don't know much about rubies, but I did do a little research. They're worth about ten times what diamonds are worth. To put it in perspective, a gram of gold is worth about 80 something dollars right now. A gram of rubies would be worth about $50,000. That's somewhat greater than gold and diamonds. What God is saying is wisdom is far more valuable to your life than you could possibly imagine. And if you would get wisdom in your life, it will bless you in every other area of your life. This is what you need to want more than anything else. The Bible says this in Proverbs 4, 7. Getting wisdom is the most important thing that you can do. I wouldn't really have thought that, to be honest. I would not have thought that getting wisdom was the most important thing that I can do in life. Circle the most important thing is to get wisdom. That brings us to a question. What is wisdom? Please write this somewhere on your outline. Wisdom is seeing things from God's point of view. Wisdom is seeing things from God's point of view. It's not knowledge. You can get knowledge in a lot of different places. You can go to school, you can go to college. You can get all kind of degrees. You can get a lot of knowledge. But a person can be knowledgeable and not wise. A person can be educated and not wise. See, wisdom and knowledge are two different things. Let's face it. A lot of educated people are actually fools. Because wisdom is seeing life from God's point of view. It says of all the things in your life, getting wisdom is the most important thing that you can do. What I want to do today and next week is two things. This week I want us to look at why is wisdom so important. Why is it the most important thing that I should want? Why should it be the number one goal of my life to get list, list, excuse me, whistle. Thank you. Next week, I want us to look at how to get wisdom. Fortunately, the wise man Solomon wrote a book about it. It's called the book of Proverbs. It's right in the middle of your Bible. It's next to Psalm. If you take your Bible and just sort of open it up, you're probably going to get right somewhere in the middle of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs 
is the book on how to live wisely. There are 31 chapters in the book of Proverbs. That means if you read a chapter a day, you go through the book of Proverbs in one month. I read about a lot of people, especially in positions of leadership and businesses, that they read a chapter every day to gain wisdom for their business and for what they're doing. And for month after month and year after year, they do this. Actually, I talked with a lady. She worked for the sheriff's department. She was advanced to supervisor. She realized that this was a sort of a new area, area of territory for a woman to be a supervisor. She knew that it was going to be hard for her and she needed wisdom. So she began to read a chapter a day of the book of Proverbs. She did this month after month, year after year. She told me it was the best thing she had ever done. Not only for her personal life, but also for her working with other people. Folks, Proverbs is just jam-packed full of practical wisdom. Practical wisdom on life, on relationships, on business, on money, on time. I want to read to you the introduction to the book of Proverbs. It's not on your outline. Didn't have enough room for that. But it gives you the idea of how it explains how important wisdom is. It says these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. The purpose of these Proverbs is to teach people wisdom and discipline and to help them understand wise sayings. Through these Proverbs, people will receive instruction and discipline, good conduct, and doing what is right, just, and fair. These proverbs will make the simple-minded clever. They will give knowledge and purpose to young people. It will give you purpose and knowledge. Let those who are wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. And let those who understand receive guidance by exploring the depths of of meaning of these proverbs, these parables, these wise sayings, and these riddles. Over and over and over again in the Bible, God stresses the importance of wisdom. He says it's the number one thing you want in life. He says it should be your number one goal. Because if you get wisdom, it's going to affect everything else in your life for the better, for good. Proverbs 9, 12 says, if you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. Circle that word benefit. It says it will bring personal benefit to you. But if you scorn wisdom, You'll be the one to suffer. Why? Let's face it. Most of your problems in life become from a lack of wisdom. Most of your problems in life come from making dumb, foolish decisions. The reason you have financial problems, you make foolish financial decisions decisions. The reason you have relationship problems is you make foolish relational decisions. You do not wait, make wise decisions. There's a verse in the Bible that says there is a way that seems right to a man or a woman, but it ends in death. It ends in destruction. It leads to a dead end. 
In other words, I make decisions with my money and I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing, but actually it's a foolish decision and I get in trouble. There are things I do in my relationships. I think this is the right thing to do in my relationships, but really it's the wrong thing. It's not wise. So I make dead ends in my relationships. There are career moves that I make that seem right to me, but they're wrong. They're foolish decisions. Because I lack wisdom, I keep running up against dead ends. So if I fill my life with this wisdom, then I am going to benefit from it. I'm going to be wiser. I'm going to have fewer problems and I am going to have more success in my life. The book of Proverbs lists all kinds of reasons or benefits why wisdom ought to be the number one goal in your life. I'm just going to give you 18 of those reasons. 18 benefits. I've listed some scriptures on your outline. I'm not going to comment on them very much because they're basically self-explanatory. I want to read them and I want you to circle the 18 benefits to your life if you become a wise person. The reason I'm telling you this is because in two weeks we're going to begin a six weeks spiritual growth campaign that is about how to live wisely, about how to be a wiser person, understanding and fulfilling God's purpose for your life, understanding God's calling on your life is one of the wisest things that you do. And if you learn wisdom during those six weeks, you're going to be wiser and you're going to have these benefits in your life. I'm going to read these and I'm going to ask you to circle the benefits. Look at Proverbs 24, 14. Wisdom is good for the soul. Circle that. Get wisdom and you'll have a bright future. Circle that. It says it's good for your soul and you will have a bright future. Do you want to succeed in life? And I don't mean just business. I'm talking about in every area. Do you want to succeed in life? Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 19, 8. Those who get wisdom do themselves a favor. And those who love learning will succeed. Circle will succeed. You know what you want to be successful in your life? Get wisdom. Wise up. Learn wisdom. See, the more wisdom you have, the more successful you'll be in life. Proverbs 4.8 says, treasure wisdom, and it will make you great. Circle that. Hold on to it, and it will bring you honor. Circle that. So in the first few verses, we see that wisdom is good for your soul. Wisdom will give you a bright future. It will cause you to succeed. It will make you great and it will give you honor. How many of you, how many of you have ever said, you know, I just don't seem to have enough time to get everything that I need to do during the day. Do you realize that's a wisdom problem? The next verse, Proverbs 19, 11, says wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. Now, what in the world is he talking about here? It will multiply your days. Folks, when you are wise, when you get more wisdom, you have the wisdom to manage your time. And the better you manage your time, the more you're going to have of it. 
The reason why we don't have enough time to get things done is because we make unwise decisions with our time. The wiser you become, the more time you're going to have. See, wisdom is a time management issue, and time management is a wisdom issue. Not only that, look what it says. It will add years to your life. Folks, that's a flat-out promise from God. God says if you live wisely, you're going to live longer. Now you get my attention. It's going to cause success. It's going to make me great. It's going to bring me honor. It's going to multiply my time. It's going to extend my life. I'm interested in God's wisdom. Proverbs 24, 5 says... Wise people have great power. Circle that. See, the more wisdom you have, the more power you have in your life. Proverbs 3.35 says, Wise people gain honorable reputation. Circle that. See, the wiser you are, the more people are going to like you. The more people are going to love you. The more popular you're going to be. The more your reputation is going to be honored. And if you have a good reputation, it's because you're not doing dumb, foolish things. You're not acting like a fool. You are wiser. How many of us have thought, man, I hope the rest of this year and next year is going to be better than last year? This previous year? You know that's also a wisdom issue. Wisdom makes life better. Look at Proverbs 15, 24. Wise people's lives get better and better. Why? Because we're not making the same, same dumb mistakes we made in the past. If I am wiser this year, my life is going to be easier. It's going to get better this year because I'm not making the same foolish mistakes I've been making. I'm not repeating the same errors of the past. See, the wiser I get, the better my life gets year after year. So obviously, I don't want to be a fool I want to be a wise man or a wise woman. Now the next verse, Proverbs 3, 16 through 18, mentions seven major benefits of getting wisdom in your life. Wisdom offers you long life. That's the first one. As well as wealth. That's the second one. In other words, you wise up and you start using your money wisely. And on. Circle that. Wisdom can make your life pleasant. In other words, it's not near as hard. Have you noticed if you make a lot of foolish decisions, life is a whole lot harder? What, you got to be tough? If I make wise decisions, life is more pleasant and easier. Wisdom can lead you safely through life. In other words, wisdom is a protection. It keeps you from making mistakes. Circle that. Those who become wise are happy. You want happiness? Wise up. The wiser you get, the happier you'll be. Wisdom will give them life. In other words, true life. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. These seven benefits are so over the top. If I did not know that it came out of the Bible and that God said it, I would think it was one of those infomercials we used to see all the time. You know, I hold up this product and I say this product will make you have a long life. It will make you wealthy. It will give you honor. It will make your life pleasant and a whole lot easier than it was before. It will lead you safely through the problems of your life. It will make you happy. And it will give you uh, experiences in life that 
that is meant to be lived the right way. And you're probably going to be thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know about that. Folks, I didn't say that. God did. God said it. God is telling you and me the value of learning His wisdom. That's why in the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at what on earth am I here for? Because if you become more wise, these things will also be true in your life. Look at Proverbs 4.12. Nothing will stand in your way if you walk wisely. In other words, you walk wisely, you get your dreams. You get your goals. See, wisdom shows you how to get around all the barriers. It says nothing will stand in your way. And you will not stumble. In other words, you won't make years of any mistakes. If you're wise, you won't stumble when you run. Can you see how important wisdom is your, in your life? Do you understand why wisdom should be the number one goal of your life? Do you realize how it's worth six weeks of your life to hear it, read it, study it, memorize it, meditate on it, to learn how to live wisely. Folks, it's like everything else. Wisdom is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Being close to God is a choice. Success is a series of making wise choices. Wisdom is a choice. You have got to learn to be wise. If wisdom has so many benefits to my life, why don't I live more wisely? Folks, the answer is because it's a lot harder. I mean, let's face it, it's easy to make dumb, foolish mistakes. It's quite difficult to make wise decisions and then go by them. See, we, by nature, are not wise people. We do dumb things. We do foolish things. We do the easy things. Folks, there's not one of us that came out of the womb automatically being wise. Wisdom has to be learned. But I also want to remind you, you can go to school for the rest of your life and not learn wisdom. You can read all kind of books and not learn wisdom because wisdom is seeing life from God's viewpoint. So you have got to make a choice to learn. The Bible says in Proverbs 4, 5, learn to be wise. Circle that word learn. You can learn to be wise and develop good judgment. That's a choice. You have the choice to learn. You don't have to develop. You don't have to learn. It's your choice. You know, over the years as a pastor, I've had people come to me and say, Eddie, I so wish that I'd given my life to Jesus a lot earlier in life. I regret waiting so many years to uh, uh, give my life to Jesus. I was going the wrong way. And I feel like I'm never going to catch up. I feel like I'm never going to catch up. Folks, that's wrong. You are never too old to learn to be wise. If you're alive, if your heart is beating, if it's pushing blood through your veins, then you can learn to be wise. You are never too old to be wise, and you're also never too young to learn wisdom. Because wisdom has absolutely nothing to do with your age. You can be old and a fool. You can be young and wise. 
Would you agree with me that it's possible to grow older without growing up? A lot of people just simply grow old. You can grow old and still be walking around in spiritual diapers. You can still be walking around in spiritual diapers and be 95 years old. Or you can be a young person and you can be full of wisdom because you're doing the things that make you wise. God's Word shows us the importance of wisdom. Lord willing, next week we'll learn five different ways on how to become wise. But remember, God's wisdom is learning life from His Word the way God sees life. Let's choose wisdom.